Uh, good day, everyone. So yes, uh, before I get started, one of the, th the features I like uh, just sort of emphasizing if you're working with the Microsoft Cloud that uh, you may or may not be aware of, um, but basically I use Microsoft Edge as my browser and this is the newer version of Edge that's based on the Chromium engine, which is uh, the same as Google Chrome. And, uh, but it, it will also work on the old Edge. And uh, what I typically tell people to do, uh, I'll just shrink my screen a little bit just so you can see it. Uh, but if you click this ellipsis button on the very far right and then go to settings and then you don't have to worry about navigating to where this setting is, you can just search for home. Uh, but what I always tell people to do is just activate the home button and then uh, change the option to this uh, website here. Now you don't have to take note of this link. It's going to be provided as part of the PowerPoint deck under useful links. But what I do is I set it to uh, myapps.microsoft.com. And then uh, what that allows you to do is no matter where you are navigating in the cloud workspace, you just have to click that home button and it will bring you back to this launch pad of the various Microsoft apps to which you have access. Now, it, this will obviously look different to you depending on the licenses that you have assigned. So I'm gonna open another tab and I'm just going to launch businesscentral.dynamics.com and uh, this will bring us into the Business Central environment that I have created. And it's using just the Kronos Canada um, Demo demonstration data. But the reason I wanted to call your attention to this as well as the My Apps Launchpad is as you're going to begin exploring with uh, Microsoft Power BI, Power Apps, and Power Automate within the context of Business Central, there's a minor, I'll call it a bug, I, I'm not sure, it's maybe an undocumented feature would be another option. But if your um, system administrator has assigned those licenses to you and you launch Business Central, it doesn't recognize that you have those licenses until you go and actively launch each of these items once your Business Central screen is up. And it only has to be done this first time, uh, but I'm going to launch uh, Power Automate, Power Apps, and finally Power BI, just so that my uh, Business Central installation knows that I have uh, all three of these items as an active license. So uh, that's kind of the first step you need to do just to make sure that you have everything you need to get up and running. And once you do that, then you can go and uh, activate the Business Central tiles within the context, uh, pardon me, the Power BI tiles within the context of your Business Central deployment. Now, these are going to provide you with high level data for uh, certain metrics that you may wanna measure on a specific area of the system without actually having to navigate to Power BI specifically. There's a lot of features that, uh, such as the data filters, et cetera, that uh, aren't gonna be fully activated within this particular tile, but at least it gives you the ability to create some Power BI reports from uh, within Business Central that you're able to view uh, within this application and then basically saving you from having to go to another application at this time. So you just go ahead and click on next report. I only have two reports activated for this particular installation. But if you have uh, multiple reports on in, in the system, it will obviously cycle through all of those uh, as you need them to be. And um, in terms of Power BI specifically, uh, when you design your reports, and I'll show you a brief uh, synopsis of this later, but uh, on the very bottom, I have Power BI Desktop. And so this is a free download from Microsoft.com. And uh, this is where you will design all of your reports and then uh, publish them out uh, to the Power BI service in the web. So I have a KPI sample uh, report, a set of reports that I've published to this environment. And this is how you would go ahead and, and uh, have the reports visualized and then shared uh, throughout your company. <clears throat> and there's a number of different visuals that you can apply and many of them can also be acquired um, by going and uh, retrieving them from the Microsoft Online um, Store or App Source that uh, is in Power BI services here, like in, in the Power BI desktop. Uh, so this is, is one such uh, visualization that I've retrieved, uh, which is basically a, a map of the United States. And I've added a couple of features to track both uh, the sales by state as well as the profit by state. And these are also color coded, and this has happened automatically so that the states obviously with the higher sales or higher profit is gonna be colored green 
and then sales with less um, sales or profit will be colored red. So as you can see in this particular example, California is the state with the highest sales, trailed by New York and then following uh, Texas. And if we look at Texas, in terms of overall total sales, it presents um, a smaller amount of sales than the two larger states, uh, populous states of uh, New York and California, but in terms of profitability, Texas ranks right up there. So if we click on this particular slicer, then you'll see it's automatically updated the, the slicers of, of these particular charts as well, just to surface the information as to what contributes to this overall value. And uh, this can be retrieved from a number of different data sources. Uh, I just have it as an enclosed Excel spreadsheet uh, at the moment, but you can definitely retrieve this live from any ERP system. You can also combine multiple data sources, as, as Yet had mentioned, if you have a point of sale system and CRM, et cetera. And uh, whenever you want to eliminate a slicer, you just go ahead and click it a second time, and then the uh, slicer goes and it resets back to the default. This is a, a really good slicer, or a, pardon me, dashboard that I like as well. And so what I created here was a customer satisfaction dashboard. And I changed the theme so that I modeled it after a stoplight uh, schema in that obviously green is, is the more desirable outcomes followed by yellow and then red would be the least desirable outcomes. Now, what I like especially about this is if you're familiar with Microsoft Excel, and this is where my, uh, the Microsoft tool set tends to have uh, to be very strong as well. So uh, if you're familiar with Microsoft Excel, then applying this type of conditional formatting within your Power BI reports is, is exactly the same approach as using conditional formatting in Excel, where you can create rules around certain things and have the colors change based on those rules. So here in this particular, in these particular gauges, I have set a goal uh, that we would like to attain in order for, for us to be happy with the, the numbers that are being presented. And then as I click on uh, certain items in the data slicer, you'll see this gauge now has changed to yellow, yellow because the uh, color, uh, the, rather the, the number is a little bit closer to the goal. So now if I click the green uh, pie chart here, now you see the conditional formatting has changed that outcome to green. And then there's another um, color that I picked as well so for example, in this particular gauge, because we have 100% based on uh, these, uh, this data slicer here, I colored that as blue just to show that it's, uh, it's hit the maximum level possible, but you certainly don't have to do that. Now, when you track different customer metrics, uh, so in, in, this, in this example here, I have how difficult is our website uh, for you to do shopping? So uh, when you're looking at this type of metric, you can obviously ascertain that uh, our, almost 50% of our customers find our website cumbersome to deal with in terms of shopping. Or, you know, what do you think of, uh, like, would you recommend our service to, to a colleague? Or are you satisfied with the customer service level that you received? Or how about uh, our price or product quality? And what I wanted to sort of drive in terms of the, the narrative here for the Power Automate system is you can have this type of Power BI dashboard, for example, uh, streamed directly from a Microsoft form. So if you create a Microsoft form survey, and we know many times customer engagement with surveys could be quite low. Uh, so you could create a survey of perhaps one or two questions after a, a customer engagement, whether they, they shopped on your website or you just completed a service call with them and so on. Send them a one or two question survey through Microsoft forms and have their inputs directly streamed into this Power BI dashboard so that you're looking at your customer satisfaction live in real time. And uh, again, there's a number of different ways that you can represent your data as well, and it can, uh, it can come from many systems. So if in this scenario, we have a Dynamics 365 field service system, which uh, has uh, work, open work orders for uh, technicians that are in the field. So we can, again, click on a specific data slicer and it will filter out all of the inspections. So it will show the customers who are currently getting uh, inspections done, as well as the, uh, the resources assigned to each of those and how, much, uh, how many of these resources are active and how many active work orders we have for each particular type. And again, as, as you may or may not notice, I did change the theme here as well. So you can, you can 
uh, do any kind of branding that you want as well as uh, achieve any type of, of uh, color theme that you feel would be the most appropriate for your deployment. And uh, some other metrics you could you could obviously track live as well is the, the number of minutes with uh, with each uh, encounter, uh, or service call rather, how long it takes to resolve each issue. And then here we have a scatter chart where you have the two axes that are providing data. So obviously the, the average booking minutes uh, would go along this axis and the revenue uh, generated would go along this axis. And what I'm tracking with the size of the bubble is uh, which uh, revenue do we have uh, in terms of these um, uh, the service calls? Pardon me. The the bubble is is representative of the uh, visits to resolution. So a visit could obviously be a phone call, uh, any type of activity, whether it's an email uh, or a visit to the site, etc. So for a field services organization, they may want to track at a glance, uh, you know, what's their time to resolution? How many visits are required to to resolve each of these items? So you can gain a lot more um, insight using these visuals. And uh, this other uh, visualization is what's called a tree map. So again, uh, this, these are our different resources. Uh, so this is a revenue by resource and you can pick each one and it will obviously give you the, the slice data as we've seen before. And uh, if you hold down your control key on your keyboard, you can pick a second resource or even a third and it will go ahead and update those based on your selection. So it really gives you a lot of um, uh, of liberty in terms of navigating these different uh, visualizations and getting at the data that you really want in terms of making your decisions. And so if we have another map visualization here where it's gonna show the, the location of each of your customers. And then uh, again, the, the size of the bubble is going to be the, the revenue associated with each. So this one is derived from Bing Maps and uh, you could do that uh, within the context of your Power BI dashboards without uh, incurring any uh, additional costs for most applications. Uh, typically it's, it's in a, about 100,000, I believe is, is the monthly amount. So it's usually a lot of companies, unless they're quite large, don't typically hit those very often. And now uh, we're going to just quickly look at uh, an example of a sales dashboard. And so this data is fed directly from Business Central. And again, you could uh, show some of these dashboard information within the context of your Business Central application. But if you wanted to, to filter in and use some of the data slicers and maybe drill into some other aspects of, of uh, some of the metrics, then here's where you really want to, to be in order to, to fully utilize the, the Power BI at, at its uh, full capacity. And at a glance, again, here we have uh, a bar chart, which is providing still two-dimensional data. But now what we've done is we've added a color code. So if, for example, we receive a call from John Haddock Insurance and they, they want to buy more uh, Athens desks, well, at a glance, I can see they're red. So they have uh, an outstanding AR balance that's overdue. And so what I can tell them is, you know, I, I really appreciate your order, but before I can release that from the warehouse, I really need you to resolve this $85,401 uh, outstanding balance. And then we can go ahead and release those chairs. So again, it's, it's all about including uh, additional details for you. Uh, so that you can make more decisions at a glance. And uh, another uh, item that you can uh, do as well is uh, if you click on a specific map point, again, it's going to slice the data and, and serve that tree map to you in, in the way that makes the most sense with the, the data that you've selected. And then the other thing uh, that you can do as well, which, uh, 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 it's not really illustrated in, in this particular uh, slide, is you can customize these uh, these cue cards that appear. So here we have uh, the Athens desk, for example, which is showing current sales of $64,000. Uh, you can customize these cue cards to add additional information that you may want to look at. So for example, you could have uh, the budgeted amount uh, show up here as well, just to show that, you know, are you tracking on target with with the budget? And in terms of this uh, this summary here, this is a feature called Smart Narrative. So when you're looking at a report, a lot of times we'll be able to, to analyze these things and make derive insights from them, but maybe it's Monday morning and you haven't had your coffee yet. And uh, you, you kind of want to, to look at this report and, and maybe utilize the Smart Narrative a little bit and just kind of figure out uh, what it is it, it's trying to tell you. And then 
uh, if you if you keep your attention on the smart narrative at this time, and I'm going to click on one of the uh, tree maps. And now that you you notice too, the smart narrative has actually changed in order to bring you context to what the tree map is is actually showing in the terms of the current selection. So now again, I'm holding the control key down and selecting more items within the tree map. And as you can see, smart narrative is changing its uh, display as well to match the context of what you're currently viewing within your report. And so now the Power BI desktop, uh, so this is where you would you would create your, your reports and your dashboards and then publish them out to the web. We don't really have time to go through that display right now, but the reason I've uh, launched this particular uh, re report here, this is a scatter chart again. And uh, what this is using is a play axis. And I just wanted to demonstrate how you can really leverage Power BI's visual storytelling capability. So this is a, uh, Gartner's Magic Quadrant uh, for Business Intelligence. So these are all the different players within the Power BI, uh, uh, Power BI's um, business. Uh, sorry, the the business intelligence uh, community. And uh, this is Microsoft. So they're both a leader on their completeness of vision as well as their ability to execute. And this has shown the the evolution of all the different players over time. And so now, if you just imagine another business metric that you would be tracking, whether it's sales or anything like that, and you just click on the play axis, and now this brings your story to life. So it's going to show an animation, and uh, that way you can just uh, show visually the evolution of all the different data points that you want to, uh, to show to your, uh, your leadership team. And so... We're going to quickly move to the Microsoft uh, Power Apps. And this is where you can really uh, dive into your systems a lot more. Uh, in the interest of time, I've kind of created a few things ahead of time. So uh, if I go to uh, data here, so this is the area where you would first uh, set up your connection. And you may need the assistance of, of your, your IT administration, depending if you, they have these parts locked down or not. Uh, not every organization does, but every business is different. And um, so here I have uh, the connection that I set up for uh, Business Central. And then as, as Yed had mentioned earlier as well, uh, you, I also have one for the common data service. So if, for example, you uh, utilize multiple Dynamics 365 products, so you would have, say, Dynamics 365 Business Central for your your uh, your accounting system. You have Dynamics 365 Customer Engagement, for your CRM system and you use field service and all these other things. So uh, you may want to, to connect using the common data service instead of just the business central uh, proper. But we're going to use the business central proper. And uh, the other uh, area I want to bring your attention to as well is, is tables. Now, what Microsoft has done here with the common data service is they give you everything that's available within that uh, those products so whether you're talking about accounts or activities or addresses and so on everything is there now when you're dipping your toe for the first time uh, into the the water of working with power apps you may not want all of these things listed all at once and, and that's fine and uh, so there's a, a very quick way that i'll show you around that and um, so what we're going to do is uh, once I create my power app, uh, you'll, you'll see what I mean about filtering out those, those items. Now model apps, uh, those, those are very powerful apps and uh, we're not gonna cover them today because that would probably be a multi-hour demonstration. So uh, my recommendation to you if you're getting started in power apps for the first time is go to Canvas apps and then start working with that. And so here I'm going to choose start with your data and I'm going to go ahead and pick the phone layout and uh, I'm going to choose uh, the Dynamics Business Central, as I had mentioned, and uh, it'll just take a few moments and it's going to return with my, uh, the, the name of my companies. And so I'm going to map to uh, Kronos uh, Canada, which is my, my test company. Now you have um, these tables. They, they're also called entities, but think about this. Uh, this is a table within your, your air quotes SQL database. And uh, so you can you can obviously go with multiple items. So here uh, uh, you could go with uh, items, for example, for inventory. Uh, we can choose customers if you want to um, create a Power App regarding your customers or vendors and so on. 
So what I'm going to show you is an application that is going to look at items within Business Central. And so it's just going to do an animation to show that it's creating a power app for you based on your requirements. And it's, it's going to derive some insights uh, as to what it thinks you might want in terms of an app. And so I'm just going to go ahead and skip the, the, the tour. Now, this is going to show you exactly what your app is going to look like on the phone. And uh, so this, this is a good start. I, I, I really like it, but I want to maybe change it a little bit. So I'm going to click on uh, this top item here. And if you notice up here, it says this item dot number. Now, I'm not a developer. I really don't know what I'm doing. I'm just going to go ahead and delete number. So I'm leaving this item dot period. And now there's a drop down list and it gives me access to all the different options I have. So, you know, I'm going to choose display name. So I'm going to change this to display name. And now, obviously, this is a, a duplicate field here. So I will I want to change this to something else. So I'm going to say uh, give me the inventory amount for that. And then here, I don't really want the unit of measure. Uh, so give me the unit price. And so there we go. Now I've, I've modified this app and I'm just gonna um, go ahead and, and press the play button. So if, if you look up here, there's a play button. So now, now my app is launched and I'm able to work with it in real time and test it. So I'm just gonna quickly scroll down. I apologize for scrolling a little fast here. And so now you see the Athens mobile pedestal. There's five in stock and it's got a, um, a unit co uh, price of $651.40. Now, this number here, we, we'll have to change this a little bit. Uh, oops, pardon me. We'll have to change this uh, a little bit just to make it um, display currency properly. Uh, right now, it's only showing it to you as a number. Uh, but again, we'll, we'll reserve that for, for another time. And so here, if I click the expansion arrow, it's going to bring me into a detailed screen. And now I have all the details of, uh, of this particular item. And just to show you that I am in fact working with the, the live data. So I'm going to go ahead and click this plus button. And now it's brought me to my, um, my um, item entry screen. So I'm going to enter an item 1004. And let's call this uh, red racer and uh, the type is going to be inventory. And item category code, I'm, I'm just gonna leave that as empty. And uh, we're, we're also gonna leave blocked off. And so I'm gonna go ahead and click the plus, or pardon me, the, the checkbox. And so now Red Racer appears just below co-op cycles. So if I go over to, uh, I'm gonna go to item. And now it's gonna bring up my screen. And there we have Red Racer. I, I've just added that into my, uh, my inventory system. And then I can go ahead and just open up uh, Business Central, like the item there. And then, uh, so unit of measure, we're going to change that to uh, pieces. And, uh, you know, if I had an image for, uh, well, I'll, I'll, just, um, I'll just go ahead and, and upload uh, something. So it's not, not the, the right one, but uh, yeah. So you can go ahead and you can upload a photo of, of the particular item type and then uh, start interacting with that. Um, so you can think about any number of opportunities that you'd have to create a power app for your users where you'll be able to uh, have somebody who's on the shop floor and just uh, basically using this application to, to add inventory or maybe to see what inventory items are available, where it is in the warehouse and so on. So there, there's any number of, uh, of abilities for you to take advantage of within uh, the Power App system. And uh, now just a, a brief example of uh, Power Automate. And so if you think about how your job has evolved uh, maybe uh, so so if i think of myself I, i've been in it for 30 years and looking back when i first came in in every morning um, my job was to sit there and probably spend the first couple of hours a day uh, looking through all the different computer logs that we had for our servers and seeing are there any errors and anything that i need to to worry about 
And uh, that was true for probably the first 10 to 15 years. And then after that, um, tools became available and things became automated so that I didn't have to look at those logs anymore. Uh, an automated system did for me and would give me an alert whenever something was amiss. So then that freed up my time in the mornings to do a lot more a lot more uh, things that were productive and uh, more geared towards uh, the organization becoming uh, more profitable and being uh, you know, uh, better at what it does in terms of uh, its uh, offering uh, service offerings to its customers. So here's where a lot of the automation capability, with it, even within Power Automate, can solve some of your very real potential pain points with not a lot of effort. So as an example here, and it doesn't have to be complicated. Uh, so if you think about this particular example, this is a vacation calendar. Now you, you think, oh, I might need to, to go through HR and get their approval and so on. But if you're, if you're using this for informational purposes, say within the context of a department, then you don't really need to make it hard. Uh, HR can still have their source of truth and you book your vacations through their proper service and whatever vacation times you have left from the HR perspective is what is that source of truth. What, what I'm getting at in terms of this particular automation is if you have a department with multiple people who work in it, as a practice lead, you're probably very busy. You don't really remember who asked for vacation a couple of months ago and now you need their help in uh, this week and you remember, oh yeah, I, I gave them vacation when you go to see them at their desk or, or look at them online. So what this particular Power Automate does is uh, using a SharePoint list, when, uh, when you create an item, or, or so basically the, the, uh, you could tie this into Microsoft Teams so that your users can go to that Microsoft team, type in a vacation request when they would like time off, and the system goes and looks at the who created the email, and then it will it will look at the Microsoft three, uh, Office 365 graph to say, oh, this particular person reports to this manager. So it's going to go ahead and send the email to the manager with an approve button. And so it, here's uh, basically the body of the email that gets uh, gets created, and you can you can word it any way that you please. Um, but basically, it, it sends the manager the note saying this pers person wants these uh, days off uh, for this particular purpose. And then there's an approve or reject button. And obviously, if uh, if they go ahead and they uh, reject it, it's a very short flow. So if they reject it, it just sends the rejection back and terminates the process. Or if it approves it, what it does is it informs the the person making the vacation request of an approval and it sets the content in that SharePoint list from pending to approved. Uh, and then it creates an item in a shared team calendar that you can also link to as a tab in Microsoft Teams so that it will show this particular person's vacation in whatever range they, they suggested or requested, pardon me. And then afterwards, what ends up happening is the, the practice lead being very busy uh, may may not really go look at that calendar very often. So then you have the option to subscribe to that list and say, okay, a week before a person's vacation starts, please send me an email about it. And then afterwards, you'll get something in Outlook pushed to you saying, oh, here's a reminder that you know uh, person Y is going to be starting vacation next week and they're gone for a week. So again, it's all about finding ways to use the tools that you have available. And again, with P Power Automate used in this way within the context of Office 365, uh, in, in a lot of times your license already includes that. So you'd be able to take advantage of this today, again, without a, uh, incurring any additional cost. And so uh, that's that's all I have for today. So I'm gonna hand it back to, uh, to Ziad and Tess. And uh, uh, also thank you very much for, for your time. Have a great day, everyone.